That's what she said. All right. Hello. It's lovely to be here. You guys are fascinating. How did you? How did you meet first? Are you at people? Or? Saw her sitting in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> she saw her sitting in a wheelbarrow. You got, you're just fantastic. I'm, that's so good. I'm, I'm on all the apps. You know, I'm going down the traditional route. Uh, it's a dead end, obviously. Um, I matched with an actor recently, which I thought was quite glamorous. And then when he found out I do stand up, he said, "Hey, let me send you my show reel." I was like, "Oh my god! Why can't you just send me a picture of your knob, you creep?" <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad. It's so bad. I saw one the other day and this guy, his profile just said, just sex, nothing else. <laughs> Christ, that is depressing, isn't it? Just sex, nothing else. Well, if you ask the average sex worker, they'd say, no, no, there are some other soft skills around the main event. <laughs> how, how do you want a date with somebody where it's just sex, nothing else? Because like, you can't go for a drink with them. You can't go to the bar, <laughs> for better or worse. Um, you can't. You, just sex, nothing else. I was imagining myself walking up these sad concrete steps in the rain, knocking on the door. Hello, I've come about the It's not for me. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter because I've got a dog. It's very good, isn't it? Second hand, I'm not part of the problem. Um, he's, he's great. Uh, they saw me coming, though. I'll be honest, he's, he's massive and then he's 12. Um, when I turned up, I said I wanted a medium-sized dog, and they said, this is a Staffy Cross, and I went, great, and I got him home, I thought, why am I looking up at this dog? <laughs> That's a Staffy Cross, what's he crossed with, Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> and he loves cheese, he loves, he loves cheese. If I want to eat cheese now, I have to go and do it in the bathroom. <laughs> I've got no authority over this dog whatsoever. Um, he, he's a bugger, he broke into a cupboard the other day and stole half a block of cheese. Half a block of cheese! Half a One of my friends said, are you worried about big vet bills? I was like, big vet? I'm worried about big cheese bills! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. It is expensive, I was, I was worried about vet bills. But it turns out um, you can get the most fantastic free veterinary advice from nutters in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Very confident people, um, <laughs> just but more time than your average vet as well, very thorough. Yeah, they've got all day. Just come up to you really confident. Oh, excuse me, love, I think that dog's got mange. <laughs> Thank you very much, we think the same about you. <laughs> now, look, I do, yeah, I think he's got mange and his hips look a bit funny. And look, I'm not an expert, but that might be borderline personality disorder. <laughs> what? What a strange man. Um, Luckily, they always think you can solve everything with turmeric. That's, that's really good. It's not effective. It's, it's fantastic. I said to this guy, look, he's a rescue dog, you know, I, I just got him to test lipstick and street drugs, but that's good to know. Thank you very much. Okay, what else has been happening? Uh, sexual, uh, sexual consent is very popular, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, 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 it's just in the background. It's just, it's just there. No, we're having a festival of it now, can't we? All the men are thinking about what they've done. <laughs> not, not like, I don't, you know, like, what the science and building bridges. No, no, not that. Not that. The other, the other stuff, they're all thinking, they're all in a lot of trouble, aren't they? I don't know, I don't know how much I'm into it. Um, I've got one friend, and, and sexual consent is like her hobby now. It's her favourite thing. She just enjoys giving it or not. Um, she wants to know what he's going to touch and when, and is he going to put jelly on it? <laughs> Sexual encounter or a smear test. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going that way. So it's not. I mean, I think I think you've got to be prepared for a small element of surprise. That might be the wrong word. It's got to be some spontaneity, surely, surely. But um, no, you've got to sign things down, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> I I what do I know? I'm in the park talking to nutters. <laughs> I'm very much on the. When I was younger, I was really into feminism. Like, oh, yeah, when I was 19, I was very annoying. Um, which is how it's supposed to be, isn't it? That's fine, I was 19. But I, I'm not really into it now. And when I was at university, I, I did uh, my dissertation on uh, the lived embodied female experience and the impact of cosmetic surgery. So I, don't even, I can't remember, it's so long. Um, and I found it the other day, and I was just like, the gist of the paper was sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, I just, I just don't feel that way now, you know. Now I just sort of think, Christ, if, 
If you're going to dismantle the patriarchy, just check there's no plumbing or anything in your clothes. They are useful. They're very, they're very useful. Um, so it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. Um, it's called the comedy cow. I don't know what the origins of that are, but it's quite countryside-y, isn't it? Um, countryside-y? I don't. It feels very pretty. I, I grew up in the West Country. We had buildings made of Yellowstone as well. Uh, but I flatter myself you can't hear it. I don't think I sound. Can you hear it? Thank you. No, I don't think you can. Uh, unless, unless I go back home to Gloucestershire, if I spend a lot of time around my old friends. Um, certain words and phrases make me sound a bit farmery. You know, if I say things like, um, like, leave it to you and work, it will get ten points of cider and load of coke and knock you out. <laughs> You're a little twang, then, can't they? Um, so I don't know what it's like around here. Do you go, are you into beer festivals? Yeah. Not as much as I thought. Okay, that's the gauge. So it's not that countryside. You're all on the train to London all the time. Okay, fair enough. Well, I grew up in a place where a meat raffle is still a legitimate form of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not something that Iffy would talk about. That's just a meat raffle. It's just, it's just people trying to win a shoulder of beef or a leg of lamb. Or, so they say, I always used to look at the bag and think, is it a tourist's head in a Tesco bag? <laughs> that's what it's like in the West Country. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I, I don't go back very often, but I go back now and then to remind myself why I left. Uh, it's all good fun. Uh, I've got this friend called Double R Dangerous Disco Dave. <laughs> and he is. He's Double R, he's dangerous. He runs the disco. Um, <laughs> did he used to be a drug dealer? Yes, he did, but he's done his time now. Let it go, let it go. He's a postman now, it's all fine. <laughs> and when I went back recently, I saw him, and he was sitting on the same bar stool I left him on 18 years ago. <laughs> Fair play, though. And he said, Eric Cress, how come you've gone to that London? Don't you like it around here no more? <coughs> hey, you know, I'm not a like pretentious twat, but I love, I love London. You know, it's like you can be, you can be anonymous, and that makes me feel kind of legitimate. You know. He said, "Oh, Chris, I do. I know what you mean. My cousin Tone was illegitimate, and he moved to Cheltenham." <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I've got my old friend Christy. She's brilliant. Uh, when we were kids, we would go out and get drunk earlier than we should. I mean, what, what's the standard starting drinking age here? Thirteen. <laughs> so you're wasting your talents. Come to Gloucestershire. Right, perfect. Thirteen. I was a bit late, but we'll have it. Um, and so what would happen is you'd go out drinking at the quarry, um, which was just a place where your parents didn't come and check. And then you'd graduate at sort of thirteen and a half to go into the pub, basically. That's what it was. And we'd, we'd go out and get uh, rather drunk every Friday. And, and every single Saturday, Christy would say the same thing. She'd go, "Oh my God, I feel so rough. I think somebody spiked my drink last night." <laughs> Not with Christy, 20 Bacardi Breezers. Again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it? Uh, she's a very dramatic lady. And things don't change. I spoke to her recently. Uh, she said, oh my God, I've got to go up Shells next weekend. Her eldest, Bethany, is turning 14. 14, oh my God, how time flies. She said, oh, I know, 14, she'll be getting fingered at the bus stop next. <laughs> <laughs> must we, Christy, must we. Must we. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's Um So uh, we've had a lot of fun in the last couple of years. I, I used to do admin in an office in central London. I don't know if anyone else has overcome depression. It's <laughs> great, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? There's a dishwasher in the corner with a sign on it that said, Empty, please fill me. <laughs> I almost felt closer to that than anybody else on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do think human beings are very difficult, aren't they? I get some great advice off my mum, though. <coughs> my mum's fantastic. I don't know how you guys feel about having self-help books bought for you. She bought me one recently by Dr. Phil. Um, I don't know if you know Dr. Phil. He's a Texan self-help guru. Definitely a real doctor. There's a metallic pink heart on the front cover. <laughs> Fantastic book. If I'm reading it in public, I always wrap it in a copy of Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech so no one judges me. <laughs> 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 yes. It's really inspiring. It's, it's called something like, Find a way to fix your heart to find a man to fill your hole. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 
He's darling, Dr. Phil knows what he's doing. He says you just need to relax with people. Let the small talk lead to the big talk. <laughs> Mother, uh, Dr. Phil's never tried ecstasy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my tip for your next day. I've been Chris.